Now we'll come to our wiring, which as I mentioned with the PVL is really easy because there's only uh, two wires. They go up, connect to the coil, and then we just have the HT lead. So seeing as this used to be the oil uh, holding tube, it's got a nice fitting in the bottom. I always like to run the wires up that. They come out the top, go straight to the coil. It's all nice and neat and out the way. Now the fitting on the bottom has a filter on and a nipple, so it's not uh, you can't really get the wires through. So I take one, because of course it's now redundant, and just drill it out large enough to get the spade connectors through and take the filter off. So we've put a grommet on. We'll put these through there like so. Then what I've also already done is I've run just a piece of welding wire down through to catch on to these and pull them up. So we're just going to fasten that onto there with a bit of tape. And we pull them up through. Now we've got our wires out the top, so we can mount the coil. Oh, that thing is done this morning. Spent some time last night on haul trying to talk to my internet service provider, or as the case is, my non service provider. We've got a problem, it just keeps going off all the time, just any time it feels like it. Now what I'm going to do here to make sure there's a perfectly good connection is I'm going to put the uh, the earth on there and instead of using the frame I'm actually going to run another lead down to the engine. I always like to have perfectly good connections so let me get the wires out and we'll do that. As you can see I've uh, got a wire here going right to the the rocker box so this is completely connected now to the the engine we've got the earth lead ground lead here for the coil and we've also got here the earth lead for the kill switch so what we're going to do is we're going to put those two together there like thus
And then round on the other side, we will take Hang on, I got the wrong ones here, people. Too many black wires were spared. I'm going to put the coil one round the other side. This one is going to go on here, like that. Then this one can go the other side. Washer. And nut. By the way, um, I had a point, but all of the fasteners are stainless steel. Spokes are stainless steel, etc. So now then, we tighten this up. These will almost certainly swivel round when we tighten it up. So there we go. We can fasten that up there neatly out of the way. Same as that. Now then, as I mentioned, the uh, these spade connectors are actually different sizes, so you can't wire it up the wrong way. So the small one goes on there. large one goes on there and I've just noticed good old sods law this which goes to the uh, kill switch is a female and this particular kill switch is also a female so we'll have to find ourselves a male connector to put on there to connect that and a couple of cable ties and then we'll come back to this I've got uh, a mail put on there, so that's all connected up. Our earth there. So now all we need to do is put the plug cap on here. I've uh, put a spark plug in just finger tight so I know where it is. And this is one of the simple straightforward screw into the copper centre of the HT lead. That's going to go on there, like thus. So we'll tighten our little clip up. This little screwdriver is perfect for two things. One is very small Phillips screws and the other is slipping off small Phillips screws and impaling your finger or your hand. I've done both. So there we go. We'll put ourselves cable type there. We'll just do these loose for the minute. and just uh, fasten up the other little bits of wires. There's the electrics all done. Now we're going to adjust the clutch. As you can see, I've got uh, a lot of play there. You do not adjust the clutch here. That's just for getting the cable the right length. So what we're going to do is we're going to screw the clutch rod in, the little adjuster on the end, it'll push the rod through the clutch and that'll start to move the actuating arm on the other side and when the actuating arm starts to go out it'll pull the cable. So if you watch that we're going to start screwing 
in to push the the clutch rod. You can see that's starting to close. We take it till we have about an eighth of an inch and then we'll pinch up the lock nut. Now what that's done is that means there's a little bit of play at the other end. So the little ball in the actuating arm is not pressing on the rod which is then pressing on the end of the clutch. The clutch rod can just be uh, out of action. These clutches are so nice I don't know why anybody puts a clutch light on them. But there it is. So that's where you take up the actual adjustment in your clutch. Not with that because you could be taking this up and the the clutch plate, the rod could be pressing on it, could be slipping even, you know, you're taking this up like mad when actually what you should be doing is is getting that adjusted at the clutch where the rod presses at one end on the actu actuating arm and on the other end on the clutch plate. You don't want them touching, you want a little bit of a gap so that it can it can just be the clutch can just be spinning spinning without the rod being in play. So the next thing we're going to do is check that the clutch plates are freeing equally. And just to show you what I mean, there is the little bit of play in this end. It's not much, but it's just enough so that the clutch push rod isn't in contact with this end and that end at the same time. Now we'll turn the engine over so that the clutch spins. Pull the clutch in. See the plate coming out? and spin it while watching this outer plate. There's a very slight bit just there. It moves out very slightly. Right there. So we'll just tighten that a fraction. What you're looking for is real wobble, not some very minor variation because nothing's perfect. Still a touch. Same place. Okay, yeah, I'm happy with that. So we can put the outer cover on, nice new gasket, and then we can move to carburetor. Now we're going to put the carburetor on. Now, as I mentioned before, the, the ones I've been using recently are these OKO flat slide carburetors. They're made in Taiwan. Um, I'm sure they're a replica of something. They take Keihin jets and uh, Keihin needles. So if you've got to uh, do any tuning to them, the parts are readily available. Uh, there's a couple of interesting things with these. One of the most interesting things, and I think I mentioned it, was that uh, there are actually Chinese rip-offs of a Taiwanese carburetor. And they even go to the trouble of uh, making the box look the same. So, it's a uh, spigot-mounted carb. You can get, uh, obviously, the, the mounting with it. They are slotted so you can get up to the uh, two inch AMO centers as opposed to the one and seven eighth Japanese ones. But unfortunately they're only for quarter inch or it's probably for six millimeter. So I have to open them out slightly to take the five sixteenth studs on, on the BSA. Now the studs on the BSA are far too long when you're mounting this. So what I'm gonna use is a couple of these. There's a little cutaway for a bolt head, so they fit in nicely. Um, this is uh, is rubber onto metal. This is actually a metal piece, so it's if you're thinking that's not going to be very firm there, there is metal inside there. So that will go on on like that. Now, one interesting thing about uh, these carburetors is that unlike the average carburetor, where the sort of 
eighth to quarter throttle response is the throttle slide the amount of cutaway in it these have the same size throttle slide in all of them or they have the same cutaway get it out nice chromed one so we're not going to have any wear problems but you'll notice the uh, the cutaway on this it's the same on all of them and what you do when you're tuning it is you tune the uh, the pilot jet it has the usual air screw and when you come to what would be the throttle slide cutaway if it's too let me get this right now if it's too weak you go to a smaller body carburetor if it's too rich you go up a size now I started with a 26 millimeter um, and I found that everything was perfect except that cutaway section I have one place here where you go over a log and then you've got to make a turn and you don't have so you don't have much room so you're just going over the log and then you've got to pick up straight away and it would stall out every time so we put a 24 millimeter on cured that problem completely um, it has fuel enrichment system rather than a choke so that's nice and also an added bonus when I went to the 24 millimeter was it has this almost like an accelerator pump idea but it's it's a little extra feed which gives you a boost at, at lower RPM I say they're, they're quite nice carburetor I've found them very good fitting the cable is a little fiddly it doesn't just go in and go into the bottom there's this strange uh, nylon thing it goes in and hooks over a thing there but you'll see all that shortly so this is the one we're going to use uh, another thing with these is you can get a curved adjuster in here if you haven't got a lot of room if you can't have the the neat the cable just going straight up they do make a curved one of these so they're very versatile all right um, let's fit it something in passing here which I'm sure you all know but just in case we're gonna take studs out I've already taken one out when you're taking a stud out don't use a pair of pliers or channel locks as they call them here a vice grip or any of that sort of thing all you need to do is have two nuts you put the two nuts on making sure you've got plenty of thread on them you tighten them up against each other and then if you're screwing out you use this nut to get it out if you're screwing it in you use that nut and if you do that as you can see here you will take the stud out without damaging the threads so as i say probably everybody watching knows that but just in case we've got some uh, some people who are just starting out on this uh, incredibly exciting route of motorcycle mechanics that's the way you do that. Now then this uh, as I say is is rubberized metal so the rubber port part forms a very nice uh, seal and as if you've got this cleaned off it's just the tiniest fraction stuck on there so we're going to put these on Just out Allen keys are either always too long or too short. They never want to just go in where you want them. Can I do this by hand? No. There it goes.
Oh, come on, get in. Of course, it would probably be easier if I was around that side. But then, I would be blocking your view. There we go. So there's that on nice and tight. Next thing we'll do is we will put the throttle slide on and then put that into the carb and then mount the whole thing in one. Let's see if I can remember all of this. Okay, we're going to go through there. Then we have the gasket that goes on. Fits like two little pegs, generally stays put. Then the spring. The problem here is I want the camera to be close in enough to actually see what I'm doing. But for it to be wide angled enough so that things aren't going out of sight. Oh, yeah, brute. The gasket's getting in the way. We're probably going in and out of focus. Okay. Now what this does is goes in there behind a little thing, so you hold it. And the nylon thing goes down and holds it all in place. Too painful. Now then, I'm going to have to go behind that, so let me move the camera around a fraction. Hopefully, that's okay. If not, you've missed it, because I'm not going to take it all apart and do it again, because it's fiddly. So that's going to go through there, and it's going to slot down into there. You ever noticed how everybody else's carburetors, the slides go in so easy, easily? And yet the anal ones, the needle generally doesn't want to go into the needle jet. Certainly if it's anything like at an angle. That on. By the way, if you're interested in these carburetors, I don't know if you get them in the UK. I have a friend down in Maryland here who runs the Mid-Atlantic Vintage Trials group. And I'm not sure if he actually imports these or or what, but he's the person I get them from. And he's experimented a lot with them, so he's got the jetting and everything for quite a number of bikes. And I did the jetting for, for the uh, Visa 250s. Nearly forgot, look, nearly forgot. Got to have a clip. Clip on. Go around to the other side. Carbon. Slacken that clip off. There we go. Now with the carbon and Level. That's an our Jubilee clip. 
Remember all these names. Jubilee clips for these. And then I seem to remember that those little sort of spring clips that you used to put on the wall to hold your tools that were open and went boing. Where am I? Went, went sort of boing like that open. Weren't they called terry clips? Anyway, there it is on there. I've got that quite level, have I? Looked it from this side. There we go. That's more like it, I think. Let's put this clip at the top and make everything look right. There we go. And that's it. Carburetor on. Here's a little bit of a puzzle for us. This tank has got uh, two taps. It's got quite a high tunnel so you're going to have a lot of petrol in, uh, in each side here. The carb's only got one pipe going in. You know if it was an AML we could have the twin thing on the bottom. So I've got a T-piece, I've got straight pieces coming off the taps, or I've got right angled pieces. question is which is which, because I'd like to put a filter in as well, and we don't want to have sort of too tight a bend here. So where do we put things? Do we put this down there like that, have these come down each side and then have that loop round into that or do we use these maybe point one over that way and then put that down on the other side like that This is going to use up some brain cells. So let me switch you off, think about it, maybe cut a couple of lengths of tube and play around and then when I decide how it's going to go on, we will come back. Let me show you this from both sides. I've put a right angled one on here, which as you can see goes down. I'll show you the other side and it goes to the T piece there because I wanted to get some nice easy curves. So let's go around the other side. You can see on this side, uh, actually Phil Vincent would be proud of this. I put a straight one on this side and would you believe it when I looked at them, the, uh, the nut here, the hole was a different size for the straight ones and the bent ones. So this actually had to be drilled out. So now it comes down, goes to the T-piece and I've got a nice easy curve across through the filter and into the carburetor. So it's well out the way of everything. Um, all the taps are open nicely and don't catch and anything, don't stick out. So we should be all right, I think.